in our time of studies as we you know come to study the word of the Lord tonight let us join our hands and heart together in rejoicing God has been good and we are thankful to God for his goodness we are thankful to God for such wonderful love towards us again it's another night of Bible studies another night where we can learn together I am I am learning tremendously from the studies of the word. We have been in the book of James. The book of James. <clears throat> and I want to thank the Lord for such a wonderful book. A very practical book. A book that causes us to think deeply. Yes. A book that causes us to think deeply. We have been dealing with turning trials into triumph. Turning trials into triumph. Over the last three weeks, we have looked on a number of things. Yes, we have looked on a number of things. And tonight we want to continue in that vein as we look on more issues, re-trials and difficulties, testings. So at this time, let me welcome everyone. I welcome you heartily. Yes, I welcome you heartily. Welcome all the members of Greater Portmore and our leaders, 
and it's 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 nice to see you again sister Shereen and um, you know we haven't seen each other for many many years the better part of maybe 15 years or so but it's nice seeing you all right um, welcome to our members and leaders from the greater Portmore Tabernacle and those who might be watching from the Kingston Tabernacle also let me just welcome my family members and friends who are with us tonight all right let me welcome you all as we study the word of God together deacon right welcome you God bless you sir and so we we want to look into the word of God tonight all right as we hear what the word of God has to say let us pray father we give you thanks we ask you now, Lord, to open our hearts and our mind, illuminate our understanding. Father, give us an understanding heart. God, to your words, help us to be able to know how to deal with the difficulties that comes in our lives. Bless us now, Father. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we have been looking, we have been looking on turning trials into triumph i have been sharing with us that we need to to use our lemon and to make lemonade in other words to to use the the bitter situation of life to use the 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 the, 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 the many different testings and trials of life and using them for the glory of god all right we have looked in a few words that we have dealt with in detail over the past three weeks. And we are coming from the book of James, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Let us read verse 2 and 3. It says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produce steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. Let him ask God. And so we have looked on the word count, we have looked on the word let, you know, we have looked on on, on the word no. And, and so if you want to see those, you can go on YouTube and, and just look on those messages so that you can at least catch up with where we are going. All right? Because this is a series of a series of messages I'm doing through the book of James. So if you have missed the first three, you can go back to YouTube. And to look on them and to see those messages. Alright? And so last week we said, if, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. So it, it is speaking of trials and, and difficulties. So he said, if we lack wisdom when we are going through trials, ask God. Ask God. Right? And as I said last week, how many of us ask God for wisdom when we are going through difficulty? The main, the main thing we're asking God for is to deliver, to deliver us, take us out, Lord. God, just move us from this situation. But very few ask God for wisdom in the situations that they're going through. And so tonight, I want to read verse 13 to 16. Let no man say, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. James says, let no man say that I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempt no one. But listen to this. But each person is tempted 
when he is drawn away by his own entice and lust. Yeah? So each of us are drawn away, are lured in and, in, in and drawn away by our own lust and entice. By our own desires. So we see how then, when we are tempted, what caused temptation. All right? But each person is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust and own entice of his, his own desire. Then, no, watch this. Then desire, when it has conceived, give birth to sin. When the desire is conceived, it give birth. It, this is speaking now of a, a maternal situation. A woman who, who, who is pregnant and looking forward in the next seven months or the next nine months to give birth. It says uh, that we have to be careful when, when, when the, the, the desire, when it is conceived. Sin is a process, brother. I'm going ahead of myself. But sin is a process. We only see sin when it happened. But God sees it as a process. We are going to look at that. All right. Then, then desire when it has conceived it give birth to sin and when sin is fully grown it give birth to death it give birth to death so i want you to see what is happening here first there's a desire yes it says it right here all right, the desire. When the desire is conceived, when conception takes place in your mind about that desire, then it gives birth to sin because you are now acting out the desire. After sin is birth, you can't turn back, it can't turn back again. Sin is going to bring death. What I mean, it cannot turn back. We can always repent and ask forgiveness, but the act of sin would have already done. All right? No, those are the passages we want to look on tonight and to see how much we can get out of this, out of these passages. All right? So we are looking on testing on, testing on the inside, temptation on the outside. You know, oh, we continue to deal with temptation, turning our trials into triumph. So the, the, the mature Christian, if you notice, all three weeks I've been talking about maturity. Brothers and sisters, I don't know how else to put it. The only way I can put it is this. A child of God, the Christians, must seek. To develop and to mature. When the Christian is mature, then many of the responses, many of the desires which leads to sin, you would be able to deal with it in a sense of maturity. When a child is immature, when a child is immature not grown up not understanding all the things that are happening they will do things out of feelings but then as you mature you will know as an adult you will now begin to do things out of your own will than just your feelings that is where god wants to take us and sisters and all of us are still in on the wheel, still in the potter's house, still farming us. All of us are still in that process of being formed by God. So none of us have it luck. None of us have it complete. None of us have it all together. We are still in the potter's house. We are still on the potter's wheel. But we need to ensure that we are maturing. Yes, we are maturing. So, the mature person is patient in trials. The mature person is patient in trials. Trials may be 
test sent by God. Or they may be temptation sent by Satan. So trials can come in both ways. Trials can either be a test in the form of a test that is sent from God or a temptation sent from the devil. Remember what James says here. Please remember what James says in verse 13. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempt no one. So God cannot be tempted with evil, and God does not tempt anyone, all right, to, to, to cause us to, 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 to lure us away in temptation, all right? God tests the believer, but we see we are the enemy also seek to tempt the believer but something i'm gonna say tonight that is gonna open somebody's eyes let me hint at it that there are times a temptation a, a, a testing from god can lead and become let me say it again a testing from god can lead to the point on the inside where it becomes a temptation no we're going to explain that we're going to explain that from the bible all right it starts out as a a, a, a a god testing us and i'm going to give illustration from the bible all right but somehow because of what you did because of your response it now leads to a temptation to allure us away into sinning against God. All right? Just keep that somewhere in the sticky part of your mind. Uh, and uh, I'm coming to that. So what we're dealing with today is the second aspect of trials. Temptation on the inside. Temptation on the inside. Most of what we have looked at over the three weeks is testing on the outside. But now we are looking on temptation on the inside. All right, temptation on the inside. We may ask, why did James connect both? What is the relationship between testing without and temptation within? What's the relationship between both? It is simple this. If we are not careful as brothers and sisters, the testing on the outside, as I said, it can become a temptation on the inside. So we have to be very careful and be very mindful. When our circumstances, and listen to all, all these things at work, when, when our circumstances, yes, when our circumstances are difficult, yeah, they are difficult, we may find ourselves complaining against God, questioning if God loves us, and resisting his will. I don't know how many of us watched last night Ian Bowen program from the archive. Right, and it was such a blessing. All right, um, the name is slipping me now, but uh, the, the Junior Tucker, Junior Tucker was on it last night, and Junior Tucker was sharing his testimony that there came a point in his life where him cuss out God, good, good, good cussing, good, good cussing. Junior Tucker, he grew up, he said, I knew nothing else but this. But he said there came a point when everything in him life gone. Everything was taken. He looked on his wife and he told his wife, Hey, trust me, you don't deserve this. It seemed like you, you married the wrong man. You know, it's better if it does. You don't deserve this. But his wife stood. But he said it was a reach at a point where he cuss out God good. Brothers and sisters, you and I may be saying, That can't happen to me. I'm saying be careful. That the very testing that God is using. That because of your response and because of the difficulty of the circumstances. Now become a temptation. For you now to begin to cuss out God. You know begin to wonder if God really loves you. And we are going to show you how it happened. Because it happened to some people in the Bible. So we are going to show you that. Alright. All right. So, so when our circumstances are difficult, we may find ourselves complaining against God and questioning God's love. You know, and at this point, 
Satan provides us with an opportunity. Yes. At this point, Satan, when Satan says it's difficult and we now manage, then, then Satan will provide an opportunity to escape the difficult moments. And every single time, those opportunities to escape is not according to the will of God. It's not according to the will of God. All right? Now, let's use this example first. You, you wake up this morning with a thousand. You, you wake up this morning with a thousand one hundred dollars. You wake up yesterday, yesterday morning, this morning, with only a thousand one hundred dollars in your life. You know, no more money in your house or nothing. And somehow God spoke to your heart this morning and said, "You know what? Go and give so and so the thousand dollars." Now you know the truth is that this. 1,100 is to ensure that we get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But the Lord said to you, go and give such and such a person the $1,000. So somehow you know that it's God who spoke to you. You went and you did that. You are only left with $100. And so God is now testing your obedience. Because what? The Bible said obedience brings blessings. Yeah? It is better to obey God than all the sacrifices. So you obeyed. And you gave the person $1,000. And you are left with $100. And so morning, a pass of $100. Boy, you know, see nothing turn yet. Almost lunchtime. Nothing still not change. You know, see nothing change. You know, see nobody come check. You know, you know, see God send nobody. You know, see no door no open. And then you begin to wonder. I wonder if I really got to tell myself to go give them. I wonder if it's really God that has spoken to my heart. Or I just, I just my flesh. Just tell myself to do it. Or is it truly God who sent me to do it? Lunchtime pass, nothing no change, I still the $100. You have to cook because you have the children in the house. Nothing no change. Two, three o'clock, nothing no change. The circumstance are in another term or a Jamaican term. The belt begin to be tightened around your waist. Because you got up this morning with the only one towards the one hundred you had. You heard the Lord spoke to you. Go and give somebody. You did that. Some are looking forward to see something come back immediately. Nothing has come back. It's almost lunchtime gone. It's almost evening for dinner. Nothing don't come back. And so you begin to say, boy, I'm not sure if I had God. I wonder if this was God. God understand that me really need that eleven hundred dollars there for do something. God, God knows that I need that, and 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 God told me to go and 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 give that away. And so, in God testing your faith of obedience, you did that. But you know what happened now? Because nothing now change, and all the prayer you pray through the day, nobody no come and nothing no turn up, and I evening now for dinner cook. And so you said, you know what? You said, the 100 I have. God now sin. me. You know, that's a, th a terminology that we love use. Christian, stop, use it. God now sin me. Brothers and sisters, God now sin nobody. When you sin, you go and sin. So God now sin me. And so when the person said, boy, you know God, God understand. So here what? Nothing else. Me give the thousand dollar. You know what? Let me just go buy a number. Let me go buy a number, a lot of number, a cash fat number. And so you went and spent the only hundred dollars you have and buy the number. And so your number player, from the one hundred dollars, you won three thousand dollars. And so you got that three thousand dollars, come home, rejoice. What has happened? 
in that situation. That God started out with speaking to your heart in testing your obedience. But because situation was going so long and on without anything coming through, you need food, the children need food, the devil now tempt you. I hope you get where I'm going. So God tested your obedience. You obey God in testing that obedience to God. But because the longer the situation takes for change, the enemy now said, listen man, you can't get money another way. And so you use that only $100, you won $3,000 from the latter. So what? A very good thing was used by an evil intent motive to accomplish that good thing. The good thing was you need some food. But the enemy has tempted us. As a lord us away. In accomplishing that thing. In an ungodly way. Yes, I'm going to bring some more illustration. About David and that. So just bear with me. But I just want to share you that with it. God does not want us to heal to temptation. Yet neither can he spare us from the experience of temptation. You see, God will not remove that from us. You see, brothers and sisters, we are not the church protected. We are the church scattered. We are not the church sheltered. We are the church scattered. And as a scattered people, we're going to find that we are not immune from the temptation of Satan. We are not immune from that. And God will not remove that. God will not remove that. But God will use that to bring about his glory and honor while we are going through the difficult moments of life. All right? So I want us to to just to consider these things um, and just to follow me where 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 I'm going. All right. Now, if we are mature, if we are mature, we will face testing and temptation. There are three facts that we must consider if we're gonna overcome temptation. Three facts. One, two, three facts that we must consider. If we are going to overcome temptation. The first thing James wants us to consider. Is to consider the judgment of God. Consider the judgment of God. Alright. Now. James took a negative approach first. This is a negative approach. But it's an important one. James says. Look ahead and see where sin leads. Look in verse 15. Listen to what James says in verse 15. Then this then this the desire when it is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin when it is fully grown, it gives birth to death. So what James did was take a negative approach first. James says, look at the end. Whatever you do now, in a sinful way, James said the end result. When it gives birth, it leads to death. So he started out on that on that pathway in, in, a, in a negative way. So he, do not blame God for temptation. We said that already. All right, God is too holy. God does test the believer as we see in Genesis chapter 22 with Abraham when God tested Abraham. All right? And not seeking to to tempt Abraham in alluring Abraham to go away to do something that was good in a wrong way. Alright? No, that's not what he did. What is temptation? What is a temptation? What is a temptation? One is that a temptation is an opportunity to accomplish a good thing in a bad way out of the will of God. I'm going to build on that. A temptation is an opportunity to accomplish a good thing in a bad way out of the will of God. It is wrong to want, it is not wrong, I mean, 
Or let me ask it as a question. Is it wrong to want to pass the exams? Is it wrong for somebody to want to pass their exams? Of course not. But if you cheat to pass it, yeah? If you cheat to pass it, then you have sinned. So it's not wrong for somebody to want to pass their exam, but if you cheat to pass it, then you have sinned. The temptation to cheat is an opportunity to accomplish a good thing in a bad way. Yeah? The temptation to cheat is an opportunity to accomplish a good thing. The good thing what you want to do is to pass the exam, but you do it in a bad way. You cheat to pass it. So it's a good thing, it's a good desire to want to pass your exams. But the truth is that the enemy said, yeah man, you can pass it if you cheat. So you want to do a good thing in passing your exam, but you're doing it in a bad way by cheating. Yeah? So what you have done, you have heed to temptation. Because you have cheated to accomplish this good thing in a bad way. All right? Now, when we think of food, food, think of food. Is it wrong to eat? No, it is not wrong to eat. But the truth is that if we steal to eat, it's wrong. Eating is a good desire. But if we steal to fulfill the desire, it's wrong. Let us go. Let us read about this passage. Verse 13. Let no one say when he's tempted of God, I have been tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted by evil or himself. Verse 14. But each one is tempted when he is enticed by his own desire. When he's lured away. In, yes, the temptation come when you are lured away by your own desire, by your own entice. That's when it moves into that realm of temptation. So eating is good. You want to eat. It's a good desire to have something to eat. But if you steal to eat, it's sin. You have eaten to the temptation, even though it was a good desire to have something to eat. All right? Now, we think of sin in a single act, but God sees sin as a process. God sees sin as a process. No, look at the process. Look at the process. James described this process. Yes, James described this process of sin in four stages. First, James says there is a desire. There is a desire. Verse 14. But each is tempted. Each is tempted. Brothers and sisters, each of us is tempted when he is drawn away by his own entice and his own desire. So first of all, the first stage, yes, the first stage of sin is a desire. Is a desire. First, there comes a desire. You see, the word lust that is used in the passage, when we are drawn away by our own entice, our own lust, our own desire. The, the, the word lust means any kind of desire, not necessarily sexual desire. Most of the time when we, when we talk about lust, we are talking about some sexual desire. But lust is simply a desire, any kind of desire. Any kind of desire that is not in line with the will of God. So it's not only sex that deals with lust. That is a part of lusting. Yeah? But it's more than that, my brothers and sisters. So the first step in entering into sin, into temptation, because God is not the one who tempts us. No, if we learn that first principle and hold it, so when temptation comes, we should not say God is tempting us. Then you're on the right road. Don't say God is tempting us. The Bible said don't say it because God is not tempting us. Yes? No. We are tempted 
when we are drawn away by a desire. A desire. So first comes a desire. Yeah? The, God give us some desire, some normal desire for life that God has given to us. And of themselves, they are not sinful. There's a number of desires that you and I have that they are not sinful within of themselves. They are not sinful desires. All right? Without this desire, we could not function. <laughs> unless, listen to this, unless we feel hungry and thirsty, we could never eat or drink. So hunger and thirst is a natural desire. So when there is, we feel hungry and we are thirsty, it's a natural desire that says we want something to eat and to drink. So hunger is a natural desire. Thirst is a natural desire. All right? So we would never eat and drink. And what will happen? We will die. Because we need to fulfill that natural desire. Also, without fatigue, the body would never rest. When our body with fatigue and we feel, then we not rest. We will keep going. There's a natural desire for rest. Rest is a natural desire. But sometimes we don't move until we feel something in our body and say something. Then we move. All right? Now, sex is a normal desire. Sex is a normal desire. It's a desire that comes from God. Yes, yeah, sex is a normal desire. Without it, human race would not continue. Without sex, the, the human race would continue. So it's a natural desire. But it's a desire that must be done in the will of God. It's a desire that must be done in the will of God. All right? No. It is when we want to satisfy these desires, these same good desires, it is when we want to satisfy these desires in a way outside of the will of God that we get into trouble. That's the time we get into trouble. So first of all, sin starts with a desire. So the desire for food comes. The desire to drink come. The desire for sex come. The desire for whatever else come. First comes a desire. Alright? No. Eating is normal. Eating is normal. Glutton is sin. So eating is a normal desire for God. Of God. But what I'm saying is that the same normal desire, the natural desire for you to eat, the enemy can use that in temptation, in leading you into gluttony. So you have a normal desire to eat, and so you go to the function, and what if a food spread out in front of you? You have a normal desire for eat car from day and day on the road and the function is for us to come and eat. I would say a whole heap of food and you pick up what you want. And you eat two times and your belly, your belly full, pack, can't hold no more. But the thing still there, you see it. So you know you keep picking up and eating. That's glutton. That's glutton. So the, the natural desire to eat Yes, is there. But the enemy will tempt us and lead us into glutton. Because a lot of things is there. So you know what we do? A whole thing there. So just take up and eat and when the belly full. That's glutton and that is sin. So first there is a desire to eat. The desire to eat is not wrong. We're going to build upon that. We're going to build upon the desire. You know, because first there is a desire. Alright? No. Sleep is normal. It's a normal desire to want to sleep. But laziness is sin. Laziness is sin. So are you getting the picture that something that comes naturally or even what God used to test us, the enemy can use that very same testing on the outside and it become a temptation on the inside? Or are you seeing that now? I'm going to go more. All right? So, 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 Sleeping is normal, but laziness is sin. The Bible said the man who don't want to work and can work must eat. That's sin. That's sin. Yeah? 
Marriage is honorable. Sex is natural. Sex is a good desire. Marriage is honorable in all. And the Bible said, and the bed and the fire. But whoremonger and adulterer, God will judge. So marriage is honorable. Sex is a good desire. It starts, sin starts with a desire. Sin is a process. When you see somebody sin, it never just happened on the spot. There was some desire before about something. And their desire, they act upon their desire. And that desire led to a temptation to fulfill that desire. So brothers and sisters, you know what? You and I can deal with this situation. Praise God. When the desire come, deal with it. Because it says in verse 15, after the desire comes, and you give heed, then it's going to give birth to something else. It's going to give birth to something else, brothers and sisters. All right, so, the truth is that there are times some people try to spiritualize this whole thing by denying the normal desire. Oh, man, I have a desire for eat. Man, I have a desire for sex. That's not true. That's not true. There are natural desires and those desires will come. So sometimes people want to spiritualize these things very much and put it in a realm that, no, I don't have those desires. That's not true. Let us be honest with ourselves. They are honest and good desires. So desire in itself is not wrong. The desire for food is not wrong. The desire for sex is not wrong. The desire to eat is not wrong. The desire to get wealth is not wrong. But when we use a wrong means to fulfill those desires, you are giving birth to sin. And that's the time you have been drawn away. That's what it says. Listen it again. Listen it again. Verse 14, but each person is drawn away, each person is tempted when he is drawn away or enticed by his own desires. By his own desires. So we must be very, very careful, my brothers, of the desires which are natural. Some of them, some of them are not in the natural form of things. In the desire but some of those things are natural let us be very careful all right in how we we deal with that all right so the truth is that it is when we want to satisfy these desires yes it is when we want to satisfy the desire in a way outside of the will of god that we get into problem that's the time we get into problem all right when we are drawn away by these so these are fundamental desire of life all right now, if we turn off the steam, you will have no power. You will have no power. So these fundamental desires of life are the steam in the boiler that makes the machine work. That is what makes the machine work. So if you turn off the steam, then the power is cut. Now, these desires must be our servant and not our master. These desires must be our servant and not our master. And this we can do through Jesus Christ. When these desires become our master and not our servant. The desire to food should not master us. It should serve us. The desire for sex should not master us. It should serve us. The desire for wealth and money should not master us. It should serve us. When it becomes our master, those desires move from now a desire to something else. Are you getting it, brothers and sisters? It moves to something else. Now, what does it move to? The second thing. So first, there's a desire. We see that. The desire, temptation comes in verse 14. Each person is tempted. You and I, we are tempted when, when, he or when we are lured into entice by our own desire. So there's a desire. So first there's a desire. Second, as I said, we are looking on four stages in sin. 
Yes, four stages in, in, in the process of, of, of sin. Four stages. The first stage is a stage of desire. We have a desire. But secondly, we see a stage of entice or deception. No temptation appears like a temptation when it comes. It comes like a natural desire. Hey, nothing wrong if you have the desire for sex. It's a natural desire. It not come like a temptation. That's how the devil camouflage the thing. Yeah, that's how the devil camouflage the thing. So the second thing, after a desire, there is an entice to move on the desire. A deception. So no temptation appears as temptation. It always seems more alluring than it really is. James used two illustrations from the world of from the world of sports to prove the point. The, the, the term that you are drawn away in verse 14 there. Yeah? That each verse is drawn away. The word drawn away carries the idea of baiting a trap. How does someone bait a trap? The fisherman. How does the fisherman bait the trap? Hear what the fisherman does. He got his line and hook. What if the fisherman threw off the line and hook? Like that, without any bait on it. No fish now go by that. No fish now go come to that. Because they realize nothing on it is on it. On it. And so what does the fisherman does? The fisherman bait the trap. So what the fisherman does is put piece of, some shrimps on it or cut up another fish and put the meat of the fish with the blood on it. So after he covers that little hook that is on the, the, the hook on line, he put the meat on the hook. When he put the meat on the hook, whatever meat he puts on it, he throw it off. Immediately once it is thrown off, fish starts come from all the way all over. Because the fish them is going for the bait. What they are going for? The bait. The meat that is on the oak. Because it looks some shots. It looks something for them to eat. And immediately as that fish open its mouth and swallow that bait is also hooked. Brothers and sisters, that's how the devil works with temptation. That's how Satan works. He bait the hook for us. Because if him throw it out just so we never do it. But he bait the hook. Boy, I'm hungry, so I need some food. Boy, God now come to and God understand if I go buy some latte. God understand if 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 me just go around this and you know and, and take up the things even though nobody knows again and, and teeth the thing. You know, God will understand because I'm hungry. That's the bait. God will understand, you know, if me does sex, have sex one time, even though me not married. God understand because I have a desire for it. God understand because me really have the desire to get some wealth and some money. And so in order to get it, me, me does do some things and where me know it's not right, you know, but God understand. Brothers and sisters, the Bible said God cannot be tempted by sin. And he tempts no one. When you are tempted, it's because, first of all, you are drawn away by a desire. Know that the desire has gotten your attention. What the second thing that happened, there's an entice about the desire. Satan does leave the desire out there. He put some emphasis, he put some bait on it. Alright? He put some bait on it. So, the, 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 the trap us. No, the, the, the Greek meaning... For that drawn away is to bait the hook. That's what I've said earlier. The hunter and the fisherman have to use bait to attract what they want to catch. Yes, yeah, so they will use all type of thing to catch the animal, to bait the animal, the bird. It's fascinating to see all the people catch bird and put up the trap over it and throw a whole heap of corn under the trap. And have a card lent from somewhere, hide there in some bush. And as the bird come, what allowed the bird is not the trap. If it was a trap alone, the bird not going there. But they put something else in it for the bird to go after it. 
That's how Satan does the thing, brothers and sisters. But we can have triumphed in our trials and difficulties, during our temptations, during our times of testing and trials. We can be triumphant because what I am doing now is exposing how the enemy works. And the more we become knowledgeable, brothers and sisters, the more we ought to take heed. So the enemy baits the hook. Yes. Temptation always carry with it some bait, some appeal. Yes, some appeal to the natural desire. It carries that. All right? Some appeal to the natural desire. The bait not only attract us, but it also hides the true fact. Yes, it hides the fact that yielding to the desire will eventually bring sorrow and grief to your heart. It is the bait that is the thing that the enemy uses. Let us look on Lot, brother Lot from the book of Genesis. Abraham's nephew. Lot would have never moved over to Sodom and Gomorrah. Had he seen, had he not seen the watered land? Had he not seen the green, luscious place? I remember when Abraham said, the two can't escape on the same land. So here what? You choose. Choose for yourself. And the Bible said, Lot looked over to him right and realized the land was luscious and green. And then Lot looked over to the other side and realized, wow, wow this is not too luscious and green. I'm going to have animals. We want to feed. So Lot went over on that side he took he looked on the natural thing and if he wanted to look on it he was hooked on that because it was luscious and green but if other if if lot had known where he was going he wouldn't have taken that bait if lot had known the end result and where it would have led he wouldn't have taken that bait brothers and sisters the enemy would cover up. The enemy would make the thing look good so that you and I are baited in order to take it. The fish, if the fish never opened my mouth, it wouldn't be caught. But because he opened his mouth to take in the bait, he was caught. He's caught. You and I, that's the way all the enemy seek to, 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 to catch us. When we take that day. So, so Lot would never have moved to Sodom and Gomorrah. Had he not seen the well watered plant in Genesis chapter 13 and verse 10. When David looked at Bathsheba. When David looked at Bathsheba. He would never have commit adultery. Committed adultery. Had he seen the tragic consequences. These were the consequences. The death of the baby. Bathsheba's son. If David had seen that the child would have died. The other consequence, the murder of Uriah. The violation of David's daughter Tamara, his own son, molested his daughter, his, his sister. The bait is what David took. So David went out and he saw Bathsheba. And Bathsheba was taking her bath. David saw her. Immediately what arose in him is a desire. A desire. David could have dealt with the desire. A natural desire for sex. Because David was a married man. David could have dealt with that. But what David did, he saw and there was a desire for Bathsheba. But David moved from there, from thus a desire, it become now an entice, a deception, a bait. Because David has his own wife. But the bait was there for David now to go and to lie with Bathsheba. 
had David had seen all the consequences at the end result that it would bring death, then maybe David would have never taken the bait. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, some of the bait that we have taken, if we had known the end result, we wouldn't have. But we don't need to know the end result in order not to. We need to check, first of all, is this desire a godly desire? The desire to sex is a godly desire. But how should I fulfill it? Should I carry it out with someone who I'm not married to? Fulfilling that desire. I'm, I'm hungry. I feel hungry. My stomach is empty. But no, should I go and steal to fulfill that? I need some money to do something. No, should I go and buy the lotto in order to fulfill that desire? So that's where the deception comes into. So the desire, sin is a desire. Then secondly, it moves from just a desire to an entice and a deception. From an entice and a deception. <clears throat> now, let us look at this third stage. I'm coming down. The third stage. Look at me in verse 13. In verse um, 15. Let me just read verse 14 again. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed. So first there's an enticement. All right? So you're lured away by your enticement to fulfill those desires. Sometimes those good desires in a wrong way. So first there's an entice. All right? To fulfill that entice, you know, by all desire. First there's a desire. Then secondly there's an entice. All right? Secondly there's an entice. But in verse 15, it says, Then... Desire, when it is conceived, give birth to sin. So I want you to watch it. It was not yet sin. It was not yet sin. A desire is not sin. A desire for wealth and money is not sin. A desire to have something better in life is not sinful. A desire for sex is not sin. Yes, it's not sin. A desire for food is not sin. But when we need to know that entice to fulfill that desire in an ungodly way, then it give birth. Then it give birth. It give birth to sin. So the third step is disobedience. We give birth to sin. A desire lead to an entice and a deception and now it give birth to sin. Give birth to sin. So James changes the picture from an aunt and a fisher to a, a pregnant woman giving birth. Desire conceive a method for taking the bait. You see, the, 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 the will approves the act. The will approves the act that you're about to carry out. And then it will heed to sin. Know that you're trapped. Whether we feel it or not, my brothers, we are hooked and we are trapped because sometimes you don't feel nothing, but we are trapped. The baby is born and is now just waiting to mature. Brothers and sisters, the baby, there is no conception. The desire is not a conception. It's a desire. You can deal with it from it at the desire stage. It's not yet sin. But it moved from the desire to this entice to fulfill it in deception. And when it reached that stage, my brother, we are seeing now you have taken the bait. Now that you have taken the bait, you have committed the act. Now that you have committed the act, it gives birth to sin. It gives birth to sin. 
it gives birth to sin. Christian living is a matter of the will and not a matter of just our feeling. It's a matter of the will. It's not just a matter of feeling. And, and so this explains why immature Christian easily fall into temptation. Immature Christian easily fall into temptation. They let their feelings make the decision. The more you exercise your will in saying in a decisive no to temptation, the more God will take control of your life. The more God will take control of your life. And the Bible said, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. The last point I want to make, so now that we see that it is, it gives birth to sin, the next stage and the final stage, James says, then the desire when it conceives and gives birth to sin, and sin when it is fully grown, it brings forth death. It brings forth death. So the final stage is death. Disobedience. Disobedience gives birth to death, not life. It may take years for the sin to mature, but when it does, the result is death. Brothers and sisters, that's why you and I need to be very careful of what we do to bring down people's character. You and I are be, need to be very careful of what we say about people that are not true. Just to accomplish your own purpose, we need to be very careful because, listen me, sin is going to give birth. And the birth that is going to bring its death. And sometimes it is the death of a marriage. Sometimes it's the death of a relationship with people. Sometimes it's the bring the death of opportunity. And sometimes it's even physical death. Sin, when it gives birth, it's going to lead to death. The wages of sin is death. Sin healed is death. It gives birth to death, brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter how long it takes. A woman gets pregnant when she does get pregnant, one, two, three, four, five months, you don't see nothing. But when it starts to go up five, six, seven months, you start to see it. You start to see it. Then she goes to the hospital. Then she gives birth to that child. That's what sin is. Sin is sometimes hidden and we do it for long. We do some sin for long. We cover it up to long, so long. We, we have been eating to certain temptation for so long. And it is festering and it is festering and it is festering. Brothers, James said it's going to give birth one day. Stop the lying. Stop lying on people. It's going to give birth. Stop the stealing. It's going to give birth. Stop the fornicating. It's going to give birth. Stop committing adultery. It's going to give birth. Stop being a glutton. It's going to bring birth. It's going to give birth. It's going to bring, give birth. When the thing is born, you either will kill it. But it's already born. It's already born. And when you kill it, it's even more worse. Brothers and sisters. And so, that's what the serpent did to Eve in the garden. He gave her a desire. God don't know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open and you shall be like God. No evil and good. So Satan said, lie my telling. No, so if you eat it, you're going to be like God. And so she, there was a desire to be like God. That's what he says. Satan says, you'll be like God. There was a desire for the food to eat. It moved from a desire for Eve where she was now enticed by this thing and was deceived. She swallowed the hook with the bait. After she ate, 
it conceive and give birth to sin. And after it gave birth to sin, Adam and Eve was immediately, they immediately experienced spiritual death. And then ultimately, physical death. It was never ever God's desire. God's desire was for us to live eternally. But brothers, sin is going to bring death. Brothers and sisters, I appeal to you, I appeal to myself. There are good desires. It starts with that. There are times when God tests us. And the testing is to bring, to build character, is to bring the best out of us. But Satan gotten a foothold in that and realized this testing, I can now bring it to a point where I allure that person in temptation. And know that testing on the outside become a temptation on the inside where you know desire it. And nothing is wrong there with the desire. But you know want to fulfill that desire in an ungodly way. Because God will take too long. God now come true. God not really bring the person to my life yet. So you know what? My God just do a little thing because God now, God, you know, God understand. What the devil doesn't tell us is after one sin. He doesn't tell us what comes after that. He doesn't tell us what comes after that. I am appealing to us, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face temptation, get your eyes off the bait and look to Christ. We can overcome temptation. We can have triumph over temptation. Because the desire is coming. We can deal with it from it at a desire stage. Deal with it, man. Confess and repent of the desire if it's ungodly. But even the very godly desire can move from that stage for you to fulfill that godly desire in an ungodly way. James is warning us. It's a route that we all must take, brothers and sisters. It's a route that all of us are going to face. All of us are going to pass. And that is the reason why I am taking these weeks to share with us Oh, we can have victory. It doesn't mean that you will never ever eat. It doesn't mean that you will never ever sin. But what it is saying, you are so armed and dangerous. You are so armed that you are able to overcome those situations, temptation that comes in your life. And when God brings testing in your life, it is to bring out character and steadfastness in our Christian world. And so I pray for all of us that God will strengthen us. Next week we will continue on this message. Because not only will we consider the judgment of God, but we must consider the goodness of God. God is a God of judgment, but God is a God of goodness. So we will read verse 17 and downward to see that and consider the goodness of God. Even when we are going through temptation. Let me thank you very much for listening. And um, again, let me say thanks to everyone. Everyone. It's, it's a pleasure just having you with us. I really appreciate this time of Bible studies with all of you, without any exception. Thank you for streaming in so that we can learn more and more. But as usual, those persons who we not see and who, who, you know, at time, we want to give them a special, uh, a special big up, you know. And um, Anthony Martin, that uh, Oliver's son, we we are glad to have you. We know that he's from, he's living in, in where well, I think in, in Trinidad, you know, he's Trinidad. We're glad to see you, um, Martin. We haven't seen you for years since you have been back. But it's happy to see you with us. Um, Winston Green, I've got to have you. Sister Fisher, it's good to have you. We saw you this morning. And it's good to have you with us streaming. Praise God. Um, Brother Akil, it's good to have you. And Corinne Edwards, Medley, it's good to have you. 
um, with us, Brother Akil. We are always glad to see you. Sister Jennifer. Sister Jennifer, we know you are in the States and it's so good to have you with us tonight streaming. But I just want to pray for all of us tonight because we are all faced with trials and temptation. It's a route that all of us have to take. And the fact that we have to take that route, let us learn how now to, how to deal with it when we are traversing that pathway. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for those who are streaming with us. We thank you for loving us so much. Thank you that you cares for us. Father, we are thankful that you, are, you, you didn't even exempt us from testing and trials. We, we, we are not God-sheltered God people. We are God-scattered people. We are in a world that, that doesn't belong to us. The, the, it says we, 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 are, we, are, we are pilgrims. We are passing through this world. We have no abiding city in this world. And so because of that, we are God's scattered people. We are scattered. The Jews, they are scattered. As Gentiles, we are scattered all over the world. And we are in this world. And so we are going to face temptation. We are going to face testing that comes from you. We are going to face trials. We are going to face difficult moments of our life. But God, we are going to use those lemon and to make lemonade in our lives, mighty God. We are, we are going to use this situation. God, strengthen us. Father, first of all, there is a, des a, a desire. When sin, the Bible said, when we sin, say not that God has tempted us. Because God cannot be tempt, tempted by sin. And God, we are removing this from our lips. If there's any Christian who have been saying that, boy, I'm going to tempt me. Father, that today will be the last of that from their lips. Because God said, I am not tempting anyone. But we are tempted when we are drawn away. Praise God. When we are drawn away by our own desire. When the desire has drawn us away, then the desire will move to an entice and a deception, a bait for us to take the bait of the devil. To fulfill good desires in an ungodly way. And then after that, if we have done that, that God, then we have given birth to sin. And when sin has given it birth and run its full course, then it's going to bring death. Father, sometimes it's physical death. Physical death come to people because of sin. But sometimes, Lord God, it, it, it brings a debt to our marriages when we are unfaithful. It brings a debt to our relationship with brothers and sisters because of all type of hypocrisy and lies and all type of things. It brings a debt to relationship. It brings debt, Lord God, to opportunities that you would want to bring in our life. Doors that you, have, that, that you were about to open, but because we have fulfilled it in such an ungodly way, it, it closes those opportunities. It brings debt to good opportunities. Father, forgive us. Cleanse us, Lord God, from anything that we have done. Sin known and unknown. Unconfessed sin, unknown sin, Lord God, we have committed against you. Even presumptuous sins that we have committed. We repent tonight, Lord God. Every desire that is not of you, we put it under the blood of Jesus. We are saying no to those desires that the enemy would want to cause us to fulfill in an ungodly way. We are saying no to it tonight, Lord God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit in order to help us to say no. And so I pray for every person to be strengthened in their inner man by faith that Christ may dwell in their heart by faith that they might be rooted and grounded in love that they will be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breath, the length, the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we might be all filled with the fullness of God that we might have triumphed over temptation and difficulties we commit to us. Father, give us a good night rest. And if it is your will that we will live to see another day, we commit this time to you, Lord. You said you give your beloved sleep. May our sleep and our rest be meaningful. Bless your people, O oh God. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining with us tonight. I am really appreciative of every Wednesday night. But join us tomorrow morning in our devotional time, 7.30, as another of our brother 
will be coming with a devotion from the heart of God. And so we pray that God will continue to lead us and guide us. Have a blessed night. Amen.